What is good, Fin Nation? What's good? It's your boy Reason, and we are back here for another one. I need everyone to remember, ladies and gentlemen, we are still celebrating 30% off on FinsideTheNFL.com shop. Hoodies are down from 60 to about like 42. Shirts are all the way down from about 40 to about like 27. So go check it out. Um, we got some new designs up there, including the ugly Christmas sweaters are officially launched. Fanatical. He's supporting. He knows what's good. He he knows what the movement is. And Fanatical says he got his ugly Christmas sweater. Appreciate you, Fanatical. Enjoy, man. Enjoy. Enjoy, my friend. So, um, we got a lot to go over. We got a lot to go over here. Um, you know, we're going to talk about Tyron Armstead because I do think Mike McDaniel was downplaying his injury a little bit today. So, we're going to talk about that, including what a doctor had to say about his injury. So, we'll go over that. We'll show you what uh, what the doctor said. Um on top of that, man, we got all, you know, it's all the good stuff as usual. PFF grades, we are going to go over. Um, we are going to go over the snap counts as usual. We'll go over the next-gen stats. Hey, we've done it every week. We might as well. And that is we will show uh, just how efficient Tua Tungvaloa really is. And we also got, hey, we're getting into week 13. Updated playoff odds, the percentage and we got some uh, we got some Pro Bowl news, including some leading vote getters being Dolphins. So we'll get into that, man. We got a lot, a lot, a lot to go over on this Monday as we recap the Dolphins' fifth win in a row, eighth win when Tua starts and finishes a game. Man, it is a beautiful thing right now if you are a Dolphin fan, you know. It's just, it, it's beautiful, man. I, I don't know how people cannot be stoked. Now, obviously, we got a tough one on the schedule this week. Some injuries that aren't going to help the situation, i.e. Armstead. But this team, they've done it all season, and they'll continue to do. They'll battle. Until I see Tua lose a game that he starts and finishes, you know, I like our chances, man. It might be a little bit of a close game. It might be a tough game. But I still like our chances here, man. I still like our chances. So, shout out to everyone already showing up in the chat. Um, what? There's a hundred and over 125 of you already. Please do me the favor, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, guys. We're already almost at our first 100 past 10,000. So again, another thing I wanted to cover too because I keep having people ask me about this. Okay, listen to me. This whole thing going on with me announcing a giveaway, apparently there's someone that's been trying to scam people in the comment section and talking about like giving phone numbers out and all this jazz. That is not me. Like I said in the video, right? Go back to Saturday's video and you can watch and you can find out how you can enter the giveaway because I said in that video, I said yesterday and I'll say it again, I'm not announcing a winner until December 5th and I'm picking three different winners and if anyone's talking to you about a helmet or anything like that, I've already told you what the winners are going to get. 
One winner is going to get a hoodie of their choosing. One winner is going to get a t-shirt of their choosing. And one winner is going to get a coffee mug of their choosing. And then I'm going to be doing a second giveaway um, around Christmas. I will be giving away. Um, it looks like I'm going to try and give away um, a ticket to um, one of the games before the calendar year runs out. So, um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what to tell people. I mean... You know, don't fall for the okie doke, right? So, um, you know, and if you have any questions, I mean, do what other people have done. Email me, inside the NFL at gmail.com. Like I said, I ain't announcing any winners till December 5th. Y'all already know what the prizes are. So, if anyone comes around, you should know right away. It should tell you it's a scam, right? So, don't fall for that. I didn't know YouTube moved in the streets like that, but it does. So, here we are all. Should I really be surprised after seeing the people that I've met through this community? No. Um, but, guys, it is Victory Monday. It is our – I want you all to think about it. We've played 11 games this season so far, and if eight of those, we've celebrated a Victory Monday. How can you not be happy? How can you not be happy? Right? I see there's still people – nah, there's people trying to – you know, they're, they're trying to tie – to a success to Armstead, it's just ridiculous. It's never ending, man. But Tua is just gonna keep winning. Tua is just gonna keep putting up those numbers, and it is what it is. Ain't nothing y'all gonna be able to do about it except to sit back and watch greatness unfold, baby. And that's what it is. You are watching greatness unfold right before your eyes. So I don't know why these you know these people want to keep up arguing. You listen, I told y'all once, I told y'all twice. You already know. Who the realist you already know where the knowledge comes from you already know where you're gonna get the most insight and information and it's right here and you already know where you're gonna get the more more correct information hell even my predictions spot on more than most of the people here so you already know what it is you become a part of the Finside fam you will always be informed Never misinformed, and you will always know what's good because the Finside fam, I know you can still hear all of our footsteps outside of your neighborhoods because we still take in victory laps. We still take in vi we take victory laps multiple times a week, but because it, it's not just two what we're right about over here, we write about a lot of things over here. Join the Finside fam, you already know what time it is. Hit that subscribe button. Um, all right, let's get into I want to start some things off here. Let's start off with some positivity. All right. Let's start off with some positivity. I want to start off with um, an interesting little thing that Ryan Fitzpatrick actually had to say regarding to a tongue of Aloha. Um, I, I want to I want you all to see what he had to say. Uh, it came out today. Um. I don't know if y'all have had a chance to see it yet, um, but I'm going to play it for y'all. So let's get that rolling right here for y'all. All right. Let me do this right here for a sec. All right. Ryan Fitzpatrick had some great things to say about Tua Tungvaloa today. And then we're going to get into the Taron Armstead, um, Armstead information because there's a lot to go in there. All right. And we're going to hear from a doctor and a doctor's opinion on it. All right. So let's, let's get into this Ryan Fitzpatrick. You know, it's been really nice to see him back on the field. Uh, he's playing great. You know, with him, Tyreek has helped a lot. Mike McDaniel has helped a lot. And I think a lot of that has just been confidence. Mike came in and said, look, you are our guy. I love you for who you are. Go out there and be yourself. And also, too, if he lives in this box in between the numbers, you know, that line of scrimmage to 20 yards, those throws he is so effective on because he can see it, because he can anticipate it, because he's extremely accurate in that box. And that's where he's just been feasting this year. And then, you know, some of the Tyreek stuff down the field too, uh, it's been really impressive. You know, a lot of that stuff has been short where Tyreek's coming back to make plays, but uh, the stuff over the middle of the ball or the middle of the field over the ball there, there isn't a better passer in the league right now than Tua and what he's done. Did y'all hear that? What Ryan Fitzpatrick just said? Did y'all just hear? There isn't a better, better passer in the NFL with what Tua Tagovailoa 
is doing from the line of scrimmage to the 20 yard to 20 yards and over the middle of the field. And if you go back, what have me and EM said since day one? That's where you make your money. That's where you win ball games. This is the efficiency thing I keep going back to. How many times are you going to throw it beyond 20 yards? Not very many during in a game. Unless there's continuous blown coverage after blown coverage after blown coverage. But the money is made on the intermediate level of the field right in the middle there. That's where the money is made in the NFL. That's You see the difference between what Tua does to what even Jimmy G had done over the middle of the field. It's night and day. It's not even close. Tua Tungvaloa right now, there is not a better passer in the NFL right now from the 0 to 20 yard line. There just isn't. It's just, it's just not happening right now. Tua is the best in the NFL right now. Up until that 20 yard line. And then if you really want to get there beyond the 20 yard line, if you want to bring up the stats and statistics, it's giving you a top five completion rate beyond 20 as well. You can say whatever you want about where the ball is placed. The fact of the matter is it's top five. But right now he is the best in the NFL from zero to 20 period. That's it. Over. End of discussion. And I know it pains so many of y'all that were just so wrong and just just can't admit it. And I love it. I hope it eats away at you. I mean, people are watching their credibility slide by the day, and I love it. I love it. Mine piles by the day. Their slides by the day. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Hey, their credibility walks out the door. Mine sits down and has a four-course meal with me. That's how more my, the difference between my credibility and theirs. I love it. It's a beautiful thing. And I will, I will always continue to be more right. <laughs> more right. More right. So especially as I get grasp the tendencies of this new regime, which I already had a great feel for. And as I continue to grasp it more and more, it just things are going to go better. And that's only going to be better for you. The viewer, that's only going to benefit you, the viewer. Man, do you, I understand this. We only got so much time in our lives, especially as we start, you know, entering marriage and starting a family. We only got so much time in our lives. What do you want to do? Do you want to waste it on uninformed, misguided, uneducated takes and people? Or do you want to use that valuable time? And get the most insight, the most information, and the most knowledge possible with a lot of correct predictions and evaluations. You already know what time it is. Smash that like button. FinSideTheNFL.com. We're the latter, baby. You already know what time it is. And I take pride in educating my fan base. You know why? Because then they become more educated than all the other, all the other little subscriber bases and I take so much pride in that. I want the 10,000 people that follow Finside the NFL to be the smartest doll fan in the room. And I will continue on my journey to make sure that those who are subscribed to me are the smartest doll fan in the room when they enter a room full of doll fans. That's my number one goal, and I'll continue to do that. I do it for y'all, the viewer, right? It's all for you guys. Me hitting on being right about so many things, that's all for you guys to use in your conversation so y'all look right too. So it's just, it's one thing. I'm just, I'm just here to educate the masses and I take pride in educating y'all. I really do. And I take pride in keeping y'all up to speed and I keep, take pride in keeping y'all ahead of the curve. So, and it's a blessing that some of y'all, well, a lot of y'all, you know, put that trust in me to do so. So that's why when I am wrong, which again is, you know, I've admitted when I'm wrong, but more, over, more right than I'm wrong. But that's why when I'm wrong, I'm hard on myself because I, I never want to be wrong for y'all. So appreciate all y'all. Let's get into Taron Armstead. Taron Armstead, listen. When I saw it was a grade two today, I was not overly happy 
really, I was not overly happy. Um, you know, I think this is going to be worse than what people are giving it credit for right now, if you want my honest opinion. Um, now, let's get into this Taron Armstead stuff. Because if you know, yesterday, word came out that it was a strained peck. Um, and then this is what's happening right now. Um, cautious optimism on Dolphins left tackle Taron Armstead, who Ian Rappaport and I reported has a grade two peck strain, a.k.a. a partial tear. And they were responding to, you see right here, McDaniel in his presser today, the most, the biggest takeaway from his presser today. He, he was asked about could he return in two or three weeks, and McDaniel said, I wouldn't put that past him. Gathering information, seeking specialists, and letting information settle so information can be a little bit more concrete. Considering treatment options, confident he'll play again this year. Yeah, I'm confident he'll play again this year. In the playoffs, or right before the playoffs. Guys, this is a two- to six-week injury. This is not a joke. This is what ended TJ Watt's season. Okay? This is not a joke. And people need to take this injury a little bit more seriously right now. And be weary of the optimism is all I'm going to say. He's already battling a toe injury that we know. Now he's got this. Um, why am I, and I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just be in the middle. So if he plays, you're pleasantly surprised. If he doesn't play, you somewhat expected it. Just be in the middle. All right. That's all I'm going to tell y'all right now with this injury, be in the middle. And this is what Jesse Morse had to say. And as you can see, Jesse Morse's credentials are right on the side there. Fantasy Doc, conciliar, um, conciliar, concil, conciliar, sports medicine physician, double board certified, co-owner of a fantasy. And this is what he said. This is the same injury that TJ Watt went to IR with earlier this season. Usually they take four to six weeks even with help being stem said. Even with with stem cells, this is a four to six week injury. I don't think you're going to see him for at least three weeks. Now, that lines up with he can come back for the playoffs, like I said. So I do think you'll see him. I, I do I, I do not think he's done. I, I don't think he's done for the rest of the season. Let me let me get that let me get that out here. I do not think he is done for the rest of the season. I just think this is going to be more than a one or two week thing. Remember, this is what ended TJ Watts season. And I think if you want my honest opinion, I think Robert Thompson just nailed it. If I was going to put a target date in mind, the target date for me would be Christmas versus the Packers. Andy Jackson, it is a partial tear. It's a grade two strain, which means it's a partial tear. So shout out to the tonight says, um, do we forget Tua did a lot with less last year? No, I, I don't. I, I'm not sitting here saying we're going to lose. I'm just telling you all to be prepared for no Taron Armstead for probably like three weeks at least. I don't think he'll be back for the West Coast trip, and I don't think he'll be back for the Buffalo game. I think, and I haven't checked in with anyone. I'll check in this tonight and get some more information. But that's just – this is me just spitballing. I, am, I have no information here. I have not checked in. I will check in tonight. 
just spitballing, I would my my target date would be what Robert Thompson said. The, the you know it'll help his toe get better and his pec too. So, you know, that's where I'd be at. That's what I would expect. That's what I'd be hanging my hat on. That way, hey, if he comes back against the Bills, you're pleasantly surprised. I don't think he'll be back against the Chargers. Don't expect that. Don't expect that. Now, with the injury of Teron Armstead, the Dolphins needed to add some depth. So, um, they added veteran Kendall Lamb to the practice squad. Um, he's played in 86 games and even seven playoff games. Um, you know, 28 starts played with the Titans last season. Um, it's a guy who has a, you know, quite a bit of experience. It's not a, you know, now am I trying to lean on lamb for the rest of the year? No, by God, no, but, you know, it's a decent addition. Um, I'm not like sitting here saying this guy is a difference maker because I don't believe Lamb is that kind of player. Um, but hey, he's gonna come in. He's gonna get it done. Um, now, you know the the one thing people need to realize, um, he's a better pass blocker than a run blocker. Um, and even then he's had some struggles and passes at, uh, at times, but he is a better consistently throughout his career. He's been a better pass blocker, um, than run blocker. Um, now, you know, again, another guy who, you know, his snaps the left tackle basically. Right. So, um, you know, he, he does now he has played some right tackle. He can play both tackle spots. All right. But he's more comfortable at left tackle. Um, now this has to leave you wondering what's the deal with, you know, how are they going to fill this gap? I think right now, um, I think right now they're going to slide Jackson at left tackle. It's going to be Jackson or little at left tackle. And I think Shell is going to go to right tackle. I think that's what's going to happen, especially now Jackson, who knows how long he's going to be out, right? We don't know how long Jackson is, you know, how long Austin's going to be out. If Austin's out, you know, it's going to be Greg Little or Kendall Lamb at left tackle, Shell at right tackle, Robert Jones at left guard, Connor Williams at center, and then Robert Hunt at right guard. So, you know, there's a lot of ripple effects here. And, you know, even if Jackson is back, if Lamb's acclimated quick enough, I'd even look at that. I mean, we saw... Jackson was struggling. It's going to be, you know, but let, let's assume Austin Jackson's going to be out. So it's going to be Greg Little or Kendall Lamb starting a left tackle and Shell at right tackle. So we're going to be good. We're going to be go back to the cohesive unit we were minus left tackle. Because Hunt was better with Shell beside him. That whole right side's going to be better. The interior is going to be fine. It's going to be the left tackle spot. And we're going to see how much of an impact a guy like Taron Armstead had on the play of Robert Jones. So, because Greg Little, Greg Little's had moments in the preseason where he looked serviceable, but then he's had moments during the regular season where it just hasn't been pretty. Now, I'm not worried. Shell will be back at right tackle. Two of his blind side will be protected. And then Kendall Lamb or Greg Little at left tackle. Tua can see that pressure. Right? And he's got, he's showed an elite enough of a pocket presence so far this season where I know he can move up, move out, and make plays happen with his legs, with his arms. Um, But, 
you know, it's going to be all about how quickly Lamb gets acclimated to this offense. So, because right now, he's a better player than Greg Little, but Greg Little's got a massive head start on him in terms of the schematics, what's asked, et cetera, et cetera. So, we'll see how it turns out. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't think this is going to, like, you know, I don't think this injury. Armstead's going to be back for when we need him, and that's going to be the playoff run. So, and you got guys back there. I mean, if you really want, you know, run a, run a ton of 20 or 21-man personnel and ha keep Ingold on the field. If, you, if, you, if you're really that worried and you feel like, you need extra help to a side or extra help somewhere. Keep Ingold on the field. Keep Ingold on the field. If you need help to one side, freaking run 20, 20 21 personnel, offset eye, whatever you got to do. And just go max protect and help that side. That's it. You know, 21 personnel, bring Smythe out and load that side up too. You know? You can help. They can do things to help. So, I mean, we'll see. It's going to be Austin Jackson, if he's healthy, Kendall Lamb, or Greg Little at left tackle. We'll find out more as the week progresses. And after I check in. When I, when I check in and I make some phone calls tonight, I should have some more answers. Um... And, you know, that's another thing, too, right? The reason why I expect Greg Little to potentially get the start this week, not only is he vastly ahead of Kendall Lamb in terms of just being in this offense, but Greg Little's way more in game. You know, we haven't seen Kendall Lamb in a game yet. We don't know what kind of shape he's kept himself in. We just don't. And... If he if this guy's going out there and getting gassed after two drives, we got an issue. So we'll see. Got to trust the staff. Let's go eight and three. So do I think you know? Listen, this is gonna make it a little bit more challenging with their their, their the San Fran defense and especially that front. But I still believe in Tua's pocket presence. I still believe in this coaching staff. I think we can still. This doesn't deter me from thinking we can't win this game. You know, th this doesn't deter me from thinking we can win this game. I'm not all of a sudden like, oh my God, we don't stand a chance. It's going to be a little bit more difficult, but let's go. Let's overcome this. That's what champions do, right? Overcome this kind of stuff. You're going to have to throughout the hardships of a season. It's just, it's necessary. Let's get into the snap counts for um, yesterday. And let's start off with, of course, the offense. Um, you see it here. I mean, uh, man, that offensive line, eh? Man. Why can't we just have nice things, huh? Why can't we just have nice things? Now, Jackson's down to 92% because he missed the final six snaps. Um, I mean, you know, playing time. I mean, you look at it, everything was pretty spread out because of how big the lead was, right? Like Waddle, look, he's down to 62% of the snap. Sherfield, 61%. Tyreek, 59%. Um, Jeff Wilson in and out of the lineup to 61%. Um, Gaskin still only thought, saw 34%. But, I mean... I mean, you see it, right? Injuries have made this snap count, percentage-wise at least, look like pretty even keel. Um, you see River Craycraft, though, got 33%. Uh, a solid. We had to 76 total snaps, and he saw 33% of those offensive snaps. Love it. Love it. Love it. Cedric Wilson, they tried to get him a little bit more involved, 43% of the snaps, too. Um... Mike Gesicki, a guy who it looked at times like he, he it looked like times that you hadn't seen him forever, but 
he ended up holding the highest snap count in the tight end room at 54% as he was on the field for 41 of the Dolphins' 76 snaps. Now, flipping over to the defense for a moment here. This is what it looks like when you look at the defense. Um, Rowe, look at Rowe. 90% of the snaps. Basically, that that's his highest snap count of the year. Look how much they leaned on Eric Rowe yesterday. And he saw seven snaps on special teams. Love it. Um, you look at Alan and Roberts, Jerome Baker, and Duke Riley. Pretty even there in terms of inside linebacker snaps, right? 34 for Baker, 31 for Riley, 30 for... A Landon Roberts. So the interior linebacker snaps pretty much shared. And then you see um, Chubb and Phillips just dominating the outside linebacker snaps. Compared to, you know, Van Ginkle made that big play, but he only had 23 snaps yesterday. Out of a total of 61. Um, and then look at this. Love to see this. Zimmer in his debut... The new defensive tackle we added, he goes out and he had 13 snaps. He saw, you know, 13 snaps in his debut and he made an impact on some of those snaps. I love it. Great, great, great job by Zimmer in his first game. Being able to be dependent on that, love it. Add him how Zach Seiler and Christian Wilkins are currently playing. And, man, you got to like the, our interior right now with Raekwon and stuff, too. You really got to like our interior right now, huh? You really got to be uh, got to be a fan of, of what, what, what we're doing in, interior-wise right now. I know I am. I know I am. That's for sure. All right, let's get into um, – we'll go over. We'll go over the PFF stats, I think, now. Get into the PF stats before we get into the next gen stats. Um, um, let's hop into that. Will Mostert come back soon? I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mostert is back this week. I think Mostert's going to be back this week. Oh, we'll go here. Now, let's get into this. You see the week 12 reports. Um, offensively, your top graded, um, your top graded Dolphin was River Craycraft with a 91.8. Tyree came in at an 80.5. Tua had a 71.3. Taron Armstead had a 70.6. Connor Williams had a 69.9. Nice. Before he was out, Skylar Thompson actually ended up being your worst graded offensive player. A 28.1 grade for Skylar Thompson. Brandon Shell had a 43.9. Uh, Mike Kosicki had a 47.3. Jeff Wilson had a 57.3. Alec Ingold rounding out the bottom five with a 57.4. Um, now, moving on to the blocking, and then we'll get into the passing. You look at it yesterday, Austin Jackson gave up six pressures, which was the most by anyone. Um, six, they were all six hurries. Brandon Shell, he gave up five hurries. Robert Jones gave up three pressures, a sack, and two hurries. Um, Connor Williams gave up one pressure. Um, they charged one of the sacks to him. Robert Hunt gave up a hurry. And then Durham Smythe gave up a pressure as well. They charged a full blown sack to him. So, the Dolphins gave up 17 pressures yesterday, and 16 of those were on the offensive line. I mean, look at Austin Jackson comes back, and all of a sudden we go from giving up, what, eight or nine pressures a game to now we're up to 17. I mean, you know, there, there's correlation there. There's correlation there 
It, the, the, I don't think it's a coincidence that Austin Jackson comes back and then these struggles start happening. So, we'll see how it plays out moving forward with the offensive line, but not pretty. Not, not, not pretty. Let's get into Tua passing yesterday. And, um... You see, there's this chart. We always go over this chart every time because usually next-gen stats and them have different charts. It's crazy. Um, but they have him two for four from deep on the intermediate level. They had him eight for 13. Um, you look at it, they had him 10 for 13 short and then two for two beyond, behind the line of scrimmage. You look at Tua, again, when he's kept clean, he was 16 of 27. Probably one of his worst games this season when he was kept clean because he'd been pretty lights out when he was kept clean. 206 yards, average 7.6 yards per attempt. Um, he actually had two drops um, by receivers when he was kept clean. So his adjusted completion percentage was actually 69.2 um, when he was kept clean. Under pressure, though, he was 6 of 9. For a touchdown and 93 yards, averaged 10.3 yards per attempt, had a drop. His adjusted completion percentage was actually perfect um, when you look at him under pressure. His average depth of target when he was kept clean was 11.3. When he was under pressure, it was 10.7. Again, on straight dropbacks, Tua was 14 of 26 for a touchdown. Um, his adjusted completion percentage was 69.6. Average depth of target was 9.8 yards per attempt and 7.1. So we've seen him be lights out on straight dropbacks too, and he actually wasn't as lights out. Again, maybe it was a little bit of rust. Hey, we saw a little bit of rust against the Steelers when, when he came back. You know, next week he'll be right back into rhythm against San Fran, and let's hope he is. Play action, he was 8 for 10, um, 11.5 yards per attempt for 115 yards. Average depth of target was 14.5 yards and adjusted completion percentage of 90 on play action. So he was slicing and dicing off play action as well yesterday, too. Love to see it. Tua, Tua, Tua. Um, when you look at what Skyler showed us, a lot of red, a lot of not good. Um, Skyler, when he was kept clean, he was only kept clean twice. He was one of two. Um, and he had six yards. Um, he was under pressure on three of his six dropback. Sorry, on six, what on six of his eight, eight dropbacks, but only three of those were passing dropbacks. He was over three under pressure. Um, on play action, he was over two on non play action. He was one for three. Um, just wasn't really overall a pretty day for Skylar Thompson. He looked lost at times out there, quite frankly. Um, now moving on to the defense, your top five graded defenders, Jerome Baker comes in with a 90.9 Christian Wilkins with an 81.1 Raekwon as well with a firm 80.1 Xavier Howard with a 78.5 could have been a lot better if you had that, that, uh, pick too. Verone McKinley came in with a 77.5, your bottom five guys somehow ABG managed to wind up at the bottom here with a 51.8. Melvin Ingram had a 59 and a half. John Jenkins had a 60. Justin Zimmer had a 61.4. And Alandon Roberts had a 61.6. So those are your bottom five graded defenders. When we go into the coverage matchups, this is how it looks. Kader Kahu continues to be a stud. Targeted eight time, but only allowed six receptions for 12 yards. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Allowed no first downs, no touchdowns, is what it is, and no drops against. Alana Roberts, he was targeted six times, allowed five receptions for 58 yards, three first downs, a touchdown, and he also, uh, Damian Pierce, had a drop against him. So it could have been even worse. Andrew Van Ginko, the man who had the pick on the Damian Pierce throw, Targeted twice, had allowed two receptions for 15 yards and a first down, but he also had that huge pick. Jerome Baker targeted three times, allowed three receptions for 24 yards and a first down. Eric Rowe targeted three times, allowed two receptions for 48 yards 
and a first down, and one of them was a 39-yard reception. Jalen Phillips, he allowed two receptions on two targets for 21 yards and two first downs to Nico Collins and Jordan Atkins when he was asked to drop into coverage. Javon Holland allowed two receptions on two targets for 11 yards. Melvin Ingram allowed one reception on two targets for three yards. Xavier Howard was targeted twice with Nico Collins allowed zero receptions. Duke Riley was targeted once against Rex Burkhead allowed zero receptions. Bradley Chubb allowed one reception on one target for 13 yards. Keon Crossan allowed one reception on one target for 12 yards and a first. Clayton Fedulum was targeted once to Damian Pierce. Did not allow the reception because Damian Pierce dropped the football. So those are your PFF grades for Week 12 with the Miami Dolphins. Overall... I mean, overall, you know, offensively, there was stuff to talk about in that first that first half. That second half was not pretty, and Skylar Thompson was not impressive when he came in for relief. He looked like a fish out of water. He's got potential, but he just needs to continue to be developed. The game looked a little too fast for him. He was in a tight spot. He felt the pressure. He was in a pressure situation because it was getting to a point where we were needing completions. We were needing first downs, and he just wasn't delivering. So he could feel the pressure bearing down a little bit, and that will just come with more reps, right? More reps, but right now we can't afford to give him those reps because, ladies and gentlemen, we need to win football games. And think about this. Four, four score lead, you know, third quarter, usually it's like a five, six score lead when guys start coming out, right? So, <clears throat> you know, a lot was asked of Skylar Thompson. They wanted to get a good view of him. They did. Whether they were impressed or not, only the staff knows. Um... I have no idea what they went at it over with. So I, I have no thoughts on the situation because I haven't seen it. I have not seen it. So I don't know about that. Um, shout out to the donation, though. Appreciate you, EM Baller. Um, all right. Let's get into the passing charts. Um, and let's start off with Kyle Allen. We'll get into the passing charts and then the next-gen stats. You look at Kyle Allen, really nothing impressive at all. All within, I mean, look at this guy. Five attempts beyond 10 yards yesterday. Sorry, six. I didn't see that one out of bounds all the way to the right there. Um, You know, out of 39 passes, only six of them came beyond 10 yards. I mean, dink and dunk galore. I mean, his touchdown was a five-yard pass. Um, so, yeah, nothing real impressive from Kyle Allen and his showing against our defense. Let's be honest here. Um, just pfft, not good, you know. Uh, just in the, the definition of dink and dunk. What else can you say? Now, let's look at Tua. There you go. That's a little better there. I like that. Um, you see Tua now. Big, big, big difference. I mean, it's not even close who was attempting more throws beyond 10 yards. So now Tua's touchdown did become within 10 yards, but all the attempts were there. And you see that big white dot there just in front of the 40. That was... Everyone got what they finally wanted. They finally saw Tua overthrow a receiver when he overthrew Ten Sherfield. So, um, you know, Tua pushing that ball. 299 yards. I mean, how does this guy play a half? And I still got to chart 36 throws and 299 yards. Incredible. Incredible. Love it. I don't. This kid is just 
just doing the man. This guy would have put up 500 yards if they would have played in the rest of the game. Unreal, what he was doing yesterday. Just clicking, just clicking. So, um, and I expect him to be a little bit more sharp next week as well. But you see, Tua, Tua pushing that ball, Tua pushing that ball. That's and the right side of the field. You see where the deep throws are. That's across the body too. That's across the body. This man, he is not right-handed. That man is a left-handed thrower, and he got no problem going deep. No problem going deep. Love it. Absolutely love it. Shout-out to EM Ball. He says, Boyer in the front office, great at finding UDFA DBs. I agree. Kadir Kahu, man. Fro McKinley, bro. Now, I wasn't ahead on the curve on Kadir Kahu, but I was ahead on Rome McKinley. He was on my every day, if you follow me on Twitter during the draft, on day two and day three, every morning I'll put out a list of guys I would like to see the Dolphins select. Rome McKinley was there, man. Rome McKinley was there on that day three. I loved Rome McKinley coming out. Huge fan of the kid. Um, you already know, when, when we got him, we started the Rome McKinley fan club on this channel. We were big Verone McKinley guys on this channel, and they knocked it out of the park with him. And you got to give him the props on Kadir Kahu. My Lord. Texas A&M Commerce, and this guy's playing at the level he's playing at? Unreal. They did. These guys, look what they did with Needham. Unbelievable. Trill Williams was technically a UDFA with the Saints. They just got rid of They just cut him. And then we brought look at like look at the I can't say enough good things about what they've been able to do in the UDFA pool, especially in the secondary. It's special. It is special. They definitely have the eye. You got to give them a ton of respect, man. A ton of respect for what they're doing. It's a beautiful thing. It's it's really 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 impressive when you look at what they're doing. It really is. You have to be impressed. All right, let's get back into those next-gen stats. So, you see Kyle Allen had the longest completed air distance of 41.8 yards, two at 38.2. Brandon Cooks at 20.54 was the fastest ball carrier for the Texans. Tyreek Hill at 20.8. That throw where he got up that right sideline is the one they're talking about. Um, the fastest sack was Jerome Baker at 3.1 seconds. For the Dolphins and then Malik Collins at 3.4 seconds for the Texans. Now, you can already see the difference in their passing charts compared, right when you look at Tua, compared to what PFF showed us, right? Um, and there it is for your eyes. You already know what time it is. Um, Ian Baller says, not to brag, I was ahead on Kahu, got receipts. Bring them up, baby. Take your victory lap. I encourage people who were ahead on draft players like that to go take their victory laps. Take them. You got to take them when they're, when they're out there, especially on players, man. Especially on a player like Kadir Kahu. Man, pull up those receipts and bring those victory laps. I encourage. All right. Jeff Wilson, 13 carries for 39 yards and a touchdown, found most of his success running to the right edge. Miles Gaskin, I mean, only had six carries, but his biggest one coming off that right edge. So very similar. I mean, nothing really to talk about the run game over here. Just totally shut down. The Texans didn't matter. They found some success in the gaps, but nothing really at all to talk about. Now, Receiving wise, all right. You got to look at it here. The average league of separation is 2.93 yards. Cedric Wilson was at 3.19. Sherfield at 2.63. Craycraft at 4.13. Waddle at 2.61. And Tyreek at 3.4. So look at that. Waddle was averaging less than the league average and still managed to be our leading receiver. And 5 of 10, it should have been a lot better. Some key drops by Waddle. 
Um, you look at Atkins, you know, he had a couple big plays against us, and look at the separation, 6.39 yards. Brandon Cooks, 4.18. Nico Collins, a 4.41. So every name they got up there averaged more than the league average against us in terms of separation. Defensive pass rush, look at this. It, you know, before we brought in, before we brought in the homie, Bradley Chubb, all right, it was Jalen Phillips every week was right here. But look at it, it's Bradley Chubb since he's come. Bradley Chubb at 3.46 yards um, in terms of average separation from the QB when the league average is 4.53. Ingram at 3.76. Salah at 4.27. Wilkins at 4.35. All four guys under the league average. Jerry Hughes, um, he was under the league average at 4.01. Um, and why that matters is Jerry Hughes has been lights out this season. He had 34 pressures heading in to that game against us. Jerry Hughes has been lights out in terms of as an edge rusher this season. So, um, you know, it is what it is. He's a, he's a, he's a, you know, Jerry Hughes is a beast and, uh, yeah, I'll take it. That's a big dub. That is a big dub for us, you know, keeping him at bay the way that we did. Now I want to get into some things before we get out of here. Cause we've been going over efficiency. We've been going over, Hey, let's, let's bring it up. Let's remind everyone what time it is all. St and still the most efficient quarterback in the NFL. T -t 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 -to Tug of Look at that. Still, this man's literally almost off the chart. Literally almost off the chart. Unbelievable. And you know what's crazy, ladies and gentlemen? You know what's crazy? I want y'all to know something. I want y'all to hear something. Because y'all looking at that EPA number and y'all saying, man, that's off the charts. Man, that's legit. You want me to make that EPA number even more legit for you? Because I can. Just ask, Just say the words. Say reason. Make it happen. Well, I'm going to make it happen. If you look at pure EPA per pass this season and you remove screens, play actions, and RPOs, Tua Tungvaloa is still number one. He would be plus 0.54. Number two on that list, Josh Allen at 0.37. He is 0.17. Ahead, Jalen Hurts is 0.29 at number three. Mahomes is 0.29 as well at number three. Look at that. Tua Tagovailoa is 0.25 better in EPA than Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes, and 0.17 better than Josh Allen. And those are the three guys behind him. What do I keep telling y'all? Keep. Your, keep your highlight reel quarterback. Go keep that. Go keep that big arm. Go do knock yourself out. Efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. 8-0 when he starts and finishes games this year. Give me that elite efficiency. That's how you win championships, baby. Right then and there. That is how you win championships. Efficiency. To a still the most efficient in the NFL. I love it. I live for it. Woo-wee! Now what? What now, huh? Let's go even better. I want to take y'all even better. Let's go even better. I got a nice little chart here. It's going to show y'all how quarterbacks are faring this season against zone and man. Wait till you see this. Ta-da! To a tongue of a loa again. Again. He's the best in the NFL right now against man and zone. He is the best. Look at this. He is too efficient for the NFL right now. Look at this. Look at that chart right in front of your eyes. EPA birds drop drop backwards man EPA 
per drop back versus zone. Tua Tungvaloa is blowing everyone out of the water in terms of efficiency this year. He's just too efficient. Too efficient for all y'all. And Kurt just said it. Kurt just laid down. That is outlier territory in a good way. And people are still trying to discredit this man. How? The analytics? Ladies and gentlemen, the statistics, the analytics, and the film don't back you up. So, all of y'all who are still trying to take your shots at Uno, trying to do all that nonsense with Flores and everything, y'all have told on yourselves about your agendas and your narratives. Y'all are bigger haters than Dolphin fans. Y'all are more worried about hating on that kid than this team winning. It's so evident, it's unreal. Because guess what? Tua is him. And what are you going to do, brother? When the most efficient quarterback in the NFL gets signed to a five-year extension on you. What are you going to do, brother? Huh? Let's give you the old Hulk Hogan Dolphin, Miami Dolphins question. What you going to do, brother? Huh? Because guess what happened? Macho Man was right. The cream rises to the top. Oh, yeah. It always rises to the top. And the cream rose, baby. It rose and rose. And now the cream's sitting on top singing, Tua, Tua. And what do you got to say? Check your watches. If you didn't rewind them, you better get to it. Because it's Tua time, baby. It don't matter. Daylight savings don't affect it. It's always Tua time. All right, continuing on. I mean, look at this. It's just stud. Unbelievable stud. Unbelievable. One more. I just had to show y'all. One more time. Now what? Now what? Tua's the most efficient quarterback against man and zone this season. Now what? Oh, yeah. Reason likes that. All right, now, what are the chances right now, as it sits today, of Miami making the playoffs? Well, currently, it six, sits at about 86% chance to make the playoffs. We control our own destiny. And right now, it looks like we got a 6% chance at a bye week, we got a 21% chance at hosting the wild card and a 60% chance of just being in the wild card and then a 14% chance of not making it right now. So you see it right there. Right now, the Dolphins, we have a 86% chance. And that's based on over... 42,000 simulations. You see that? Almost 43,000 simulations. So you're telling me there's a chance. You tell him, Jim. You tell him. You tell him, Jim. This man was about to have another 500-yard game if it called for it. He was ready. Tua was ready to throw the ball 60 times and have a 500-yard game. Stop. When was the last time you knew a Dolphin quarterback that could do that? It was the old 1-3, baby. Also here, guys. Um, here are the leading Pro Bowl get vote-getters for the AFC. So Patrick Mahomes is currently leading the quarterback position. But Alec Ingold is leading fullback. Tyree Kill is leading at wide receiver. And Teron Armstead is leading at tackle. So three Dolphins are leading out of the eight categories listed in the AFC. We are at about 40, 45% clip right now. We are getting our recognition, man. We are getting our recognition. Tua is going to be in the uh, Pro Bowl. He's going to be Mahomes' backup. 
Tua will get voted in as the number two guy. I can almost guarantee you that. So, look at this. When was the last time you saw this, huh? Look at this. I'm taking it, baby. Let's go. Right now. And these aren't even including backups. These are just like the number one guys at their position. So, um, remember, they're going to carry three quarterbacks, three running backs. So, let's go. Let's go. We're going to, I think, we're, man, we're going to have, man, we're going to have like five or six pro bowlers this year. Right? Tyreek will make it. Ingold will make it. Teron Armstead will make it. Waddle will make it. Tua will make it. I think we'll get a couple defenders that make it. Yeah, I think you're going to, like, I think, you know, I think you're going to have, I think you're going to have a, uh, like, Wilkins deserves to be on the Pro Bowl this year. Um, You know, I think you're going to have se six, seven Pro Bowlers this year for the Dolphins. But guess what? They ain't going to be playing because they're going to be getting ready for the Super Bowl, baby. They ain't going to be worried about no Pro Bowl. They ain't going to be worried about that. They're going to be saying, yo, let's get ready. For the Super Bowl. We ain't ready for no Pro Bowl. We want to play for the real Bro Bowl. And also, guys, this is the last day. 30% off the Black Friday sale. Took it into Cyber Monday. Shirts, they're down to $27.95 right now from $40. Mugs, they're down. Um, hats are down. These sweaters, you know, we just dropped those new ugly sweaters. They're down. I mean, these are $46.95. They would have been about $65. But our normal sixty dollars sweaters are down to about forty two ninety five. So, you know, you get the salty Tua still popping. You know, we got that new Uno. We got we got three hundred five Uno. We just dropped this new design, three hundred five Uno, and that's the Uno face we actually used on um, the uh, the ugly Christmas sweater. So we got that three hundred five Uno that came out. Love that design. We got the Waddle all the way. All right, Waddle all the way, baby. We got the Waddle all the way, ugly Christmas sweater. We got the Tua. Tua's the night before Christmas. With the Uno. You gotta love it, baby. You gotta love it. Go check it out. Finside the NFL.com forward slash shop. Show some support. I'm getting I'm getting one of those ugly Christmas sweaters. You already know what time it is. Tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, I will be back with Martin. And we will be breaking down, and I think ball game will be back too. We will be breaking down every single drop back from Tua's Week 12 performance um, against the Texans. We'll be going over it all for y'all. So um, be sure to tune in tomorrow. Expect that around 8, 830. Um why don't I do the modeling tie? Don't worry, I got some things in in my mind, and it ain't gonna be me. All right, I'll give you all some people to, that that'll be worth looking towards. So, listen, I appreciate each and every one of you. I'll be back tomorrow night with Martin to break down the film. You already know what time it is, baby. Fins up all day, every day. Have a fantastic Monday.